figured we'd start at the beginning, and I just want you guys to first, what would you do when you first walk up to a horse? What's the first thing that you um, would do? Usually I kind of introduce myself, and I, you know, I, I let him smell me and touch him, you know, a little bit on his head, mm-hmm. and maybe stroke his neck a little bit. Yep, that's then good. I, then I start going through the vitals, mm-hmm. you know, and, and check that stuff. And then, Perfect. again, I usually start up at uh, the left side, around his head area, pull you know, access atlas. Yep, we definitely want to palpate, but even before we get to that point, we want to look at the horse and see if we're noticing anything. Okay. So when the horse, when the owner's walking the horse towards you, that's when we can start to look. So I was just told by his owner that he threw that shoe Shoe. yesterday. Mm -hmm. So that's obviously going to affect him in some ways. If anything, he's going to be a little lopsided because of it. Mm -hmm. He might even be sore-footed on that foot now. Um. But we also want to look at the confirmation. We want to see how they're built. Is there a sway back? Is he obviously, um, does he have like atrophy on one side versus the other, muscles built up on one side versus the other? Um, So take a look at him, guys, and let me know what you think. Hi, buddy. Hi. Big belly. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he gets used mainly for lessons. He's a lesson horse. He looks a little hippie, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he... To me, he looks a little back at the knee. Maybe a little cow hop. He looks kind of narrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's hard to tell exactly how he's standing right now, but yeah. If you can get him squared up a little bit. Club foot, right? Is that a club foot? Uh, I look it's at it from the side. It's a lot smaller than the other one, even, you know, even compensating for the shoe. But he might have broke a bunch off. It looks like it's Yeah. It looks different because the shoe's gone. Those are pretty bulky shoes. Angle-wise, when you get to the side of it, it's not exactly a club foot. club foot has a little bit more heel on it. Right hand? Mm-hmm. Yeah. His backbone feels a little pronounced. Yeah, see, that's what I was noticing when I first backbone. kind of was looking at him. He's yeah. lacking a top line, you know. Yeah. He could use... He does get regular exercise, though? Um, I, honestly, I don't know how often, but I do know that they use him for lessons. Let me pause oh. I believe that he felt, yeah, it was probably about two weeks ago, because it was right before the workshop that we were supposed to do last. So the owner said he was having some soreness in his back because of that. So we looked at him. So now we know that he's kind of lacking in the top line. Um, He has some conformational structural issues. So we know that he could have some things going on due to that. So we kind of know where we can focus on with the palpation now. But with the palpation, we kind of just want to get our hands on him, and we want to run through the entire horse. Now, I know you were saying you might have some trouble finding the stress Mm -hmm. points. Yeah. So my recommendation is don't get so caught up on what they are. And I gave you guys manuals if you want to look at it. So we have all the pictures of the stress points, and we can see which muscles they are. But don't let that hinder you. A lot of people think, like, i got to know exactly every muscle. i got the stress point. It's got to be in that same exact spot. Oh, I'm and glad, it, because... And I, it doesn't I, have I, to be. <laughs> I mean, I've been doing horses all my life, and I know the basic muscles yeah. and stuff, but it's like some of those names. It's, I know, it's yeah. a lot. And the more that you do it, the more regular it will become, so you'll, yeah. you'll start to recognize it, especially ones that are, you know, you're finding them a lot on, on different horses. And I seem to notice on the horses, I've been working on quite a few different horses, and I... I noticed that there seems to be regular stress points that yeah. I find on almost all of them, especially, you know, way up Especially if you're working on a lot of horses of the same discipline, you will start to find yeah, stuff yeah. like that. But Most yeah. of the ones I'm working on are ancient. Oh, Everybody right. thinks their horse has to be over 20 to get a massage yeah. or something. I'm like, really? <laughs> That's funny. Well, at least they're helping out the old ones, right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 But yeah, so don't get hung up on which muscles you're working on. The most important thing at this point is being able to feel the differences. So if you can feel the little nodule in the tissue, if you can feel that one muscle feels tighter than the rest or tighter in a certain spot, that's really what you want to focus on. So um, go on in there. Get your hands on them. And let's just run through. 
It's just. So do you want us to do this one at a time, or do you want me to work on one side? You can go on one side if you want. Okay. I don't I think, think he'll be. Character. Yeah, I don't think he'll be overstimulated. I think he'll like the attention. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> knots are just gonna feel like hard underneath the skin, right? Yeah, plus so like, yeah, if you're feeling something that's real superficial like that, yeah, yeah, that's more in like just the skin. We're looking for something in the muscle. So if you kind of run your hand along this muscle, you can kind of feel how these lumpy, bumpy, lumpy, bumpy yeah. in there, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so don't be afraid to put a little pressure in there. Your face is a stare. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes when they flinch, if you hit a spot. They will. So that's a really good indication because you'll feel a little flinch. Sometimes they'll try to move away from you. They might turn their ears back. If it really hurts, they might even try to bite at you. They might lift a leg, but they want to kick at you. So that's what you're aware of. But they will give you some indication that that's a tender spot. Right. And when you get horses that have a little bit more adipose tissue on them, if there's more fat tissue, you might have to push a little bit harder to get to that muscle and feel it. He's just got the belly and then nothing anywhere else. <laughs> So when you're doing this, you're just kind of making mental notes, and if you need to write it down, because it's hard to remember when you're first starting out. You can write down the little areas where you felt something, or also where he indicated that it might have been painful too. Okay. And sometimes you might miss it manually, but he'll let you know. So. And um, flinching is that another sign of some flinching for sure? Yep. Yep. Okay. yep. If he flinches, that definitely is an indication. Yeah, and sometimes, sometimes they'll lean into it because it might kind of feel good when you're putting pressure on it, or sometimes they'll move away from it, like oh, that's really sore. So mm -hmm. Go down the legs and everything? Yeah, go down the legs. You're also feeling for warmth. You want to see if, is there any kind of warmth or swelling, which would be indicative that, you know, there might be some kind of trauma in that area. He's got some little lump back here. I don't know if it's a bug bite. Well, it's not hot or painful. It feels like it's probably something that's been there for a little bit. I've never worked on them, so I don't know yeah. how long it's been there, but yeah. It has a little bit of a scar up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that is freezing, buddy. <laughs> And then as far as working on cross ties, it's not my favorite mm -hmm. thing to do because I do like to let the horse be able to drop its head and move its head around if it needs to. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I realize it might be the easier thing to do, but make sure you're working on a horse that isn't going to set back or, you know, if something's bothering him, get upset because obviously hurt himself in that circumstance. But um, you can, I'm not saying never work on cross-ties, but if you have the option to not do it, it is better if the horse can have a little bit more range of motion. There's a little bump right here. Yeah. But I think that might be old. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
It was kind of like the one he was on the other side. Yeah. I don't know if it's just me, but these feel warmer than those. Yeah, they look a little puffy. Yeah, and the fat left. I don't know if that's normal. Well, he was in a stall, right? Oh, well, yeah. So he's he probably stocked up a little bit. Yeah, beautiful. What's going on? It's a mini queen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 How's the tail feel? It's got little lumps on it. So would that be um, like a contusion, do you think? Because it's kind of big. It could be. That could have been something from what he supposedly fell or hurt himself. It could be something from the saddle as well. That's another big thing is kind of at the end of the session, I always like to look at the saddle to see if that might be contributing, how it's sitting, you know, whatever, what type of saddle they're using on the horse. And that kind of just gives you another clue. Because when you come back for a future session, if you're finding the same things over and over again, you know it's something that's going on. It's either the saddle, it's the rider, it's something that they're doing. So then you can give them advice on what they need to correct to try to stop that from happening. <laughs> <laughs> Is that his rib? Yep, last rib should be about right. Yep, right that's there. it. Okay. Pay attention to that. Yeah. So that's one of the landmarks when you're checking saddle fit is you don't want the saddle to sit past that last rib. <laughs> so, which kind of gets difficult, especially on like these little quarter horses yeah. that you have, you know, big guys riding. So they got like a big long saddle, and you're on a little. And this is an Arabian, so they have the same issue too. But you'll see that a lot. You don't see it as much with the English saddle, but with the Western saddles, you see a lot of saddles that will pass that point, and that can cause a lot of issues in the hind end because they have trouble pushing off. Yeah, that can cause soreness, you know, kind of in the side joint, all the way into the hind end. And then obviously, when you're looking at the withers, if you have this the saddle is too there. narrow, which, yeah, he's got some tenderness there, so he might, that would be something. I don't have access to a saddle, I don't know which one they use, but that's something that we would recommend that they look at that to see what they're using because it could be too narrow. Or if it's too wide, then you get it where it's putting pressure up here on the spinous processes. All right, so you have your hands on them now. So you kind of, where do you feel like you want to focus on them? Uh, maybe the wither area? He's so flinchy. He was flinchy there for sure, yep. And he's got kind of some up yeah, there. Um, yeah, I usually I usually find that um, as I'm working deeper on them after like effleurage and stuff, mm -hmm. I kind of find more as I go. Yep, even more you yep. know, than the palpation. Yep, more stuff will kind of pop up. And yeah. as you resolve one issue, like say you work on his neck here and he's kind of relaxing, something else might pop yeah. up somewhere else. So, so always, yeah, always be on the lookout. Right now, it's just kind of the initial run of trying to right. see where you want to focus on, but if you notice other things, then definitely that will be the dress. Keep lined up good. Yep. So yeah, so you can, it's kind of easy if you start at the head and kind of work your way back. Yeah. If the horse is comfortable with that. Some horses are going to be real head shy and they don't want you to touch their head. So in those circumstances, you might have to start somewhere else and kind of work up to them. So. Don't be afraid to adapt to what the horse needs. Right. You can have a certain pr protocol in your mind, but if the horse isn't really having that, you know, sometimes you might have to work, start at the back, and then he'll let you come up this way. If he's really sore in the hind quarters, you might have to start somewhere else, and then once he relaxes, something might let you in in the hind quarters. So you just kind of have to see 
Will you show me where the jaw meets together? And that's the yeah. TNJ, right? This is yeah. the TNJ joint right up in here. So hold your hands up there. And you see he's what you chewing mm -hmm. now? Yeah. Well, I can chew some more. Yeah. And you can feel it here through my finger. <laughs> no, he doesn't care. Did <laughs> you feel if like this wasn't lined up or something So was wrong? the first thing you might feel is you might have some swelling and tenderness in these muscles. Okay. The muscles of mastication we call them, it's what helps them chew. So you might have some swollen, swelling and tenderness there. If you poke at them, you might see them kind of flinch or head in the air back. Um, you would, might also notice a little bit of popping or clicking when on one side when it opens. Okay. Um, and you might also notice, well, you're always, if there's deviation in the teeth. See how those teeth are lined up? Mm -hmm. So now if those were off to the side, then you know that there's a pull from the TMJ on that side. Okay. So and then you, what would you do? Would you massage that area? You would massage it, yes. The TMJ is a sensitive joint, so you don't want to overdo it. Like, you don't want to really get pressure. in there and, you know, work on it for an hour or anything like that. But you do want to massage it. And okay. you can do kind of like, you can effleurage over it, you can do a little petrosage, so you can do kind of friction stuff if you find a particular area. You do want to massage it, and then that's another area, too, that you can make some tape on it. Yeah, I take it with laser yeah. But yeah, you do want to massage it, and then you can always check to see if you had an improvement. Now, if it's a chronic TMJ issue, you're probably going to have to have the dentist come up as well. Yeah. Because there's probably something going on in the molars back there that's contributing to it. And what are you supposed to feel for for the pole up there? Anywhere in particular? Yeah, so this is Atlas. <coughs> Yeah. This big, huge, let's see if you slide your finger down here, you can let mm -hmm. bone yeah. This is oh, the right wing of Atlas. Okay. It's actually a big, oh, yeah. a big bone when you just, you know, press on it. It's okay. pretty, pretty broad. So the pole is C1, which we also call Atlas. So the top of it is right up there. If you get to their skull, that's what we call the occiput bone. But, so we have the occiput bone of the skull, and then we have C1. That's, that's the pole, more or less, is what we call it. But what we're checking for with Atlas is we want to make sure Atlas is in alignment and that it's not causing any issues as far as pain. A lot of times when we have a TMJ issue, we're going to also have an Atlas issue so they work hand in hand. So that's something to look for. If you have one or the other, you want to check and make sure that you know, you're okay there. If you slide your fingers up in front of the Atlas bone and you press on either side, mm -hmm. the parts, mm -hmm. um, you might notice some kind of tenderness on one side or the other and, and you might also check for distance like yeah the 30 yeah okay. exactly and you might also notice that one side is more narrow than the other so if there is a difference in distance there then you probably now granted sometimes i have seen horses that are just born with asymmetric atlas bones the wings are you know it's just kind of an anomaly that they have so that's something to be aware of you will see that sometimes but if there is pain with it as well as a narrowing then it generally speaking you have an atlas issue now i've found that most of the horses that i've seen to work on don't seem to have actual tmj issues mm -hmm. but they do a lot of them seem to be tense in their jaw okay i, I don't know well why. they're chewing horses yeah. chew all day so they do use like these masseter muscles get used a lot yeah, yeah. um so that could be part of it and it could just be and also you got to look at like if they have some kind of nutrient imbalances, like if they're low on magnesium and different things, then their muscles, especially muscles that they're using all the time, are going to get really fatigued and strained. Okay. Huh. So. And with older horses, that might definitely be probably. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you are so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> Here's a little so here. going down from Atlas, we have our seven cervical vertebra, and they're all about fist size. So you can just kind of, it, they go along this row. So just kind of feel along here. You feel the hardness in there? That's the vertebral spine. That's the neck vertebra. And they're going to be like this, yeah. going down the neck. So a lot of people would assume that they're kind of up in this area, but they're not. They're like, right down like this. Kind of, you can find the jugular So that's bone. Yep, that's mm -hmm. bone. Okay. This is where the jugular vein runs. Mm -hmm. If you're doing an IV shot, and then mm -hmm. you just go right above it, and that's where the, the spine is. Yeah, that's crazy. You would think it was up higher. Yeah. That's what most people, most people tend to gravitate up here, but it's not. They have um, they have the, the bones here, and then they have the muscles, and then they have this big nuchal ligament. So that's what she's massaging right now. And that tends to get tight on a lot of horses, yeah. too. Yeah. 
I've seen it when it gets all loose after you're done. It's crazy. <laughs> Now, uh, one of the horses that I'm working on has like this weird thing on, on his crest, and it's like kind of normal about uh, about a third of the way down, mm -hmm. and then it has like a knot, and it has like a bulge that goes across the top. Yeah, so a lot of horses will get stuff like that, um, especially if they're overweight, okay. or if they have any kind of metabolic issues. I think he has metabolic They'll rights. get a crusty neck like that. Yeah. He's not super fat, so I think it's... Yeah, and it's one of those things, too, where you got to watch out for um, laminitis with those oh, horses, yeah. too, because they're more prone to it. That's my hair. <laughs> you can tell me if he doesn't like this or not, or if he's just fidgeting. <laughs> now, with the effleurage strokes that mm -hmm. you do, can you kind of just incorporate that as you go? Yeah, you should actually. So you want to start off with it just to warm up the tissues, but then as you're doing the other strokes, you always want to use effleurage strokes in between because you're helping move everything out. Everything, okay. you know, the lactic acid, all the byproducts in the muscles, everything that you're mobilizing, you want to help flow that out of there with the effleurage. 